I am at the moment in my backyard on my succulent growing area where my babies are. These are my babies that are less than a year old. It is now 11.30 in the morning and this is the area where I'm in. So you can see the sun coming through this covered uh, area which is covered with 50% UV white shade cloth. So this is the southwest area. Now on this wall here on the left, these shelves here, this is north-northwest. So that's facing north-northwest and it's exposed to the element of the top. There's no covering at all. Uh, so the top portion of these shelves, these metal shelves that I have here, has got all frost-hardy plants. As it progressed down in the second row or second shelf, I've got some less frost-hardy plants hiding in there. And these ones are mainly frost-hardy out in the front. So even at Opuncha, that's actually frost hardy, but it's only a baby, so I'm putting it there still, so I need some overhead covering. And out on the next shelf here, I've got all Lagavoides, mostly at the front, and Polydonis as well. So they're getting partial sun right inside there, and also uh, covering for the frost so it's the dew that when it settles the moisture settles on the surface of the succulents and that's how the frost form and that's how the succulents will also die so mostly these ones are all the soft leaf uh, succulents and down in the bottom it gets cold or colder compared to the top so because hot air goes up so in here I put uh, stronger uh, succulents or plants and down in the bottom here I've got hiding down through there are mostly Hawortheus and aloes that uh, that's once gasteria okay so it's just the shading sorry but I have to show you the Sun so they're still getting a little bit of sunlight but it's mostly covered and protected and out in the front again so same drill I've got mostly frost hardy plants so you got Frank Reynolds that's actually hiding because that's a newly purchased although it's frost hardy I still have to give it a little bit of protection so not too much sun and not too much exposure to the element and albicans is a uh, very pro frost hardy that's actually part of the elegance family of achiveria fiona's choice uh holygate that's actually maybe i'm not too sure about the name it could be a ronionii which is frost hardy to minus four uh that's copper canyon and this one is bronze beauty Agavoides, another Agavoides ladies choice and Exotica which I've grown from a leaf and Polydonis for hybrid so roulette is just the name I gave it because I don't know what it is until it grows up but chances are it could possibly be a Hercules as well and Sagita or Sagita and Copper Canyon again and Silver Moon over there and aloes at the back now this area where the curtain is is actually facing west so it gets the afternoon sun but in the morning uh, like most part of the day it's on, on shade so you can see up the top there's some plants there that are very very frost hardy so I've exposed them to the top that's your black prince elegans and PVN and acacia ponds and down in here uh, where the sort of slightly a little bit sensitive plants I've covered it with a curtain and down in the bottom it's exposed because that's not gonna get any frost over there so it's only the frost that I'm concerned of so but the rest of it so that's what this area looks like and over on that wall there this is north northeast these uh, two shelves here and again this one here 
this is north northwest facing so it's 11 30 in the morning here in Canberra in Australia and even the lemon is getting a bit of sun I am uh, what do you call this never mind I got my phone here just to show you right now hang on we go scroll over here it's freezing anyway so I am in Canberra in Australia there you go and the 29th at 2 10 p.m. is actually quarter past right now quarter past 2 so 2 15 and temperature is supposed to be 8.7 but apparent temperature is 2.5 dew point is 2.3 humidity 64 we just had some rain uh, all day yesterday and last night and I don't know what Delta T means and in my growing area here I have a thermometer on the table here and that looks like I can't even read it because I've got the camera on top of it okay I'm shaking I'm shaking okay so 25 degrees Fahrenheit or something along the line of minus 3 or minus 2 C anyways my succulents are all alive and doing well but uh, there's different ones in here so probably I don't know oh look that one's having babies or flowers this is a bad hair day Hatora this is what it's called it's about to flower okay so obviously he doesn't mind the cold and we've had this uh, temperature or this weather for the last three days so this is the third day now anyway so I couldn't wait anymore so I was going to do a video on how to prepare your succulents or what to do with your succulents during winter. Now it's almost winter, so another couple of days and we're right smack on June. And June in Australia is the start of winter. So these are the succulents that I have. So I've got Super Bum over there and I've got Purple Delight or uh, aka Crystal Gruptivaria and seem to not mind the cold at all and in fact it's got some babies over there okay now powder puff i know is very frost hardy up to minus six and it has been exposed to the area uh, it's in at minus 10 almost and it has survived and this is the first year I'm putting it out here sort of like semi open because I've got 50% uh, UV white shade cloth on top of this new area so okay there you go this is the shade cloth and hello boss the boss is emptying the car cleaning up and anyway so I've got my white minima Titanopsis I just uh, according to the research I've done is um, that's frost hardy so so far look nice and plump still now this one there's no name but I think this is a rubra I'm not sure whether it's a cement a chivaria or rubra but anyway it's gorgeous still now this one Pachyveria blue haze I put down not frost hardy and what do I do I'll expose it to an area where it has a chance of getting frosted PVN or Pearl Bond non work are frost hardy very frost hardy but this one is uh, the first year I've got this uh, spectabilis I think yep the Chavaria and it's going red and uh, moon glow as well I think minus six degrees C but not sure whether it can withstand if we have minus 10 over in this area so this one is Romeo um, that's PVN and this one is Sidum Clavatum which is uh, quite soft I actually have in previous years the first year I was growing succulents I've got some Sidum Clavatum and I bought it in February and stick it in my garden and that year I think we got minus 7 and it died it did not survive at all so 
acclimatization for the cyclones is very important. So this year, this is, uh, sorry, this is a gilba, by the way, and it's already two years old. So it has seen one winter already. So I'm confident that that will survive this year's winter. This is the first year I'm putting out this one. Uh, I'm talking 100 miles an hour. Also, this video is going to be like an hour long. Anyway, this is actually bee's knees, a chavaria bee's knees. So first year that I potted this up. So I've been growing it for a while and I've actually got this as a cutting from the mother. And the mother's all green, I'll show you later on. And this, this is the mother business, which is still all green because I have it in sort of open but protected area or covered area. So it doesn't get any sun at all. This is the first time it's living on its own in this beautiful pot. Anyway, uh, also it went red even with the 50% UV that I have uh, here with the shade cloth and it still went all red and nice and gorgeous. Speaking of red, let's look at this um, Serum Rubritinctum, which is like jelly beans. This is the green variety and normally in the shade it's green but out here in the sun um, will fully expose the element. Uh, it's nice and red, but those parts that are green, you can see where the sun doesn't hit it or something like that. Now, this is Echeveria rusbii. Very hardy, but actually this is the first year I've got it, so that's why it's here. So anything that I've acquired uh, for less than a year is going into these succulent growing areas. So I can't really specify every single plant I've got here, but I got mostly a lot of soft succulents, soft leaf succulents, which is your Pachyveria, your Graptiveria, Sedivaria, Echeveria, uh, all sorts of different things, but they all seem to be doing well. So Debbie's not supposed to be frost hardy. I think mine is four. I'm not too sure, but anyway in here it's all protected anyway so there's no overhead uh, settling of the frost so as long as the top is covered I reckon they will survive so these are all babies still but all these babies have been grown or plucked from the mother who has survived was seen a couple of winters and all grown actually some of them or a lot of them actually have grown them or plucked them in february in 2018 this is 2019 now and this is the progress of the growth uh some of them are plucked uh since february this year as well so uh they are so this one is Emerald Ripple. Emerald Ripple, I have it growing out in the front of my garden. And at minus seven, it just melted. It died. But these ones, I haven't seen them like with red tips as well. So they got all red tips. So probably that's due to the acclimatization. Carrie's Choice as well melted for me in previous years. And lucky enough to save a couple of leaves to propagate. So this is actually uh, leaves that I've taken from a tortured. I call it tortured because it has been exposed to the element and the mother is already almost dead and then luckily saved some leaves and now it's growing so anyway these are the different succulents but the trick is uh, to build up the soil so that way I don't water them in winter at all and three months in winter I normally come back we would normally go away that's the reason why I have to acclimatize all these succulents and so that way they can look after themselves even when I'm not around and I don't trust anyone watering them because watering them uh, would actually kill them so you can see that one has been the leaf was taken off in the 24th of November 2018 so there's only a black prince and they can according to my observation they can survive armageddon so even though it's minus 10 it doesn't seem to affect them so certain plants like your elegance here that's also a very 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 hardy plant anyway hang on that one here okay now this is uh sedum clavatum that i actually bought i did not grow this i bought them they're quite cheap and i'm trying to grow them to go red okay so now if i go over here okay so that one is Monanthus lowy so I've got my mother plant is inside actually growing with this one and um, 
and it's all like scraggly looking this actually looks healthier so i think it might be foresight so i think i have to take them out apart from the aphids over there look at that so i didn't even notice that so i can just spray that with uh dishwashing detergent which i actually haven't got here but anyway i have to stop wait a minute okay just a sec oh what is this one pakiveria pakipaitum compactum sorry that's pakipaitum compactum and another Pachypitum compactum or the mother where it came from is this one it's out in the open so the only thing it's got protecting this one with this is crassula david uh so this is i think this is three years old this uh, Pachypitum compactum so i had it last year growing in the protected area which is over there so if you can see that area there so there's overhead covering so that was growing right where stand here so this spot here okay i'm gonna point that one there that pot in the center that's where it was so it's still sort of half protected and half exposed to the element and as you can see the sun is just coming out so it's probably 2 30 now anyway so i am like i can talk i don't know how many really fast but anyway so this one now the sedum clabatum i've had this for uh almost a year old i think and look how gorgeous and red that is because i'm trying to grow this into something beautiful and delicious like that one look how nice that is so nice and ripe so i'm ripening them and this area of or the face of the sedum clobatum is actually facing north so it gets the morning sun so that is due to the morning sun the redness and uh so morning sun are these ones that's afternoon sun actually exposed that was afternoon this is these shelves here are mostly exposed to the afternoon sun i'm gonna have to step back here so it's now 2 uh 30 and you can see that um the sun is actually hitting all the succulents okay the wind has picked up and it's gone really 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 windy and freezing i'm freezing look at my hands it's all like I can't feel it anyway um, uh, these are some of the other succulents that I've got growing or I should say torturing there was frost in the car that's outside I don't know if there's still some frost I'll go check yes can you see the ice so I think oopsie because so look that thick of frost yet but anyway it is cold especially when that wind comes up that wind chill factor it's really 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 cold okay i better go inside and have my coffee hang on i'll just check these babies here no nah, no nah. hello see okay the sun's just about to come out here you can see that so that's um east so northeast so this is northeast where we are now and you can see the sedum i don't know if you can see that okay so the sedum clavatum is getting some nice sun and this one is vera higgins is getting some sun as well so all this section that are getting the morning sun are uh, sort of pink or red or getting sunburned nicely even that cactus over there and of course this area is also getting the morning sun up the top but not in the bottom here of course it's not gonna be exposed to sunlight until probably about 10 30 or um, really about 11 o'clock or almost noon so thereabouts but then these ones are all nice and red so you got okay i'm gonna start my shadow so that's victorera leticia uh that is elegance okay i'm blocking it so elegance uh sedum that's actually a graptosedum that was green um the mother's over there on the other side and it's all green still but that one's all nice and pink and ripe and that one is sedum rubitintum and this one is 
I wouldn't have a clue what this is because I bought it with no name but it's just nice and gorgeous it's an Echeveria and anyway this one is what are you topsy-turvy Echeveria as well and Longissima so even the Longissima is nice and red and my Titanopsis is all nice and red too but this is very frosty as well apparently so all my babies so the crassula gets the morning sun uh, so I got crassula David pelucida I think uh, okay so pelucida crassula David a uh, whole bunch of baby I've got snow white okay snow white grab to petalum snow white baby growing so that one there and yet the mother uh, melted away because the mother is only new so the mother is actually inside right now warming up in my display cabinet but anyway so this is all the babies as you can see uh, Graptovaria crystal and that one is Peladonis so I'm not too sure whether it's Apis or something else but it's the Peladonis uh, ah, por sorry not Peladonis Polydonis uh, family or type because there's so many hybrids so I've got so many Polydonis hybrids uh, in my garden so anyway so these ones now are all mostly Echeveria and Graptoveria and yes they are getting the morning sun and it is freezing that winds coming up again Anyway, that's a black prince and look at that, that's that gorgeous, beautiful, 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 that one. And this one is a Cheveria Cool View, Cool View, and they're normally quite big. These are all going to be left like this, so I've got Copper Canyon, I think, Cheveria Copper Canyon, Cheveria, Cheveria Raindrops, I've got a Gavoidis number 40 over here, look. So, don't know, and then that one is a miniaturizing, a top miniaturizing, miniaturized, okay. I'm trying to miniaturize, make them smaller, uh, topsy-turvy. Now, that's a Chihuahua Yensis, gorgeous, and another Rusbii and Fiona's Choice over here, and this is Morning Light, and look how beautiful, hang on, I just, there you go, look at that, isn't that gorgeous, isn't that beautiful, beautiful Morning Light. And apparently, according to my research, morning light, they don't have babies that often. And I tried growing a leaf and I haven't been successful. So I'm waiting for it to flower. But so I don't know when that's going to happen. But anyway, it hasn't flowered yet. Francisco Baldi Crested. Okay, I'm going to have to hide it from the sun so you can see. And also that one is supposed to be a PVN. I don't know if there's... Um, what do you call this? A type of PVN that's yellow and I've actually seen a lady growing it and she calls it yellow pearl or something like that. So anyway, or golden pearl, something like that. But anyway, other people have called it red sky, but it's not really red, isn't it? Anyway, so this one, this is so beautiful. Look at that. Look at that color. Now I'm going to hide it. Oh, see, see the color? That is a sedum dendroidium, and this is another sedum dendroidium under the sh shade here, and that's green. Over there, it's red. See, exposed to the element. So that actually gets morning sun and afternoon sun. Anyway, the PVNs, this is a blue prince, or could actually be princess blue. So this one now is PVN that I sprayed with Eco Pest and it turned that color being exposed to the sun that's actually seen 42 degrees um, when I sprayed it as well and it just turned yellow it used to be like that color and then now it's gone like that but you can see it's coming back see the center starting to look like that anyway so I think they're called purple pearl anyway doesn't matter they just to me it should be all gorgeous uh, anyway gorgeous is the name and I kept getting distracted by that's also PVN this is Contempo and nearly broke so I have to actually tie it and again the wind knock it over again oh my goodness 
Please don't die on me. Okay, I have to move this. Hang on. I'm afraid I'm going to have to chop this off and um, let it root inside. But it's such a pity because there's so many babies growing. See those red bumps? They are going to grow into some more plants for me uh, all over the stem. And it's a pity. See that broke while I was away. The wind broke it, not me. So now probably I need to chop that off and bring that inside to try and root it quickly as quickly as possible because I don't want it dying with the winter frost.